Hello team, welcome back to V Project UK. In today's video, we're going to touch on responsible detailing. Followers of this channel will know that we're going through detailing videos in a detailing chronological order. So we've released videos in the pre-wash phase, wash, decontamination, and now as we get into paint correction, we thought it'd be a good time to talk about responsible detailing and what that is. And what we're going to talk about is clear coat depth, machine polishing, and also introducing and talking about paint depth gauges and why these are so important before you start machine polishing. So without further ado, let's start the video. So here at V Project UK, we do responsible detailing. What is responsible detailing and what do we mean by that? Basically, it's very easy just to grab a machine polisher and start polishing using a compound pad or polishing pad with your compound or polish. But do you know how much clear cut you actually have to begin with and how much you're removing when you're actually doing your machine polishing and why this is so important? This is what responsible detailing is because you don't want to remove too much clear coat, which compromises your clear coat. And also you need to know how much clear coat there is. So if you remove clear coat during the compounding process, which you most likely will do, and then you want to polish your car in the future or you sell your car to the next buyer and they uh, have a car then which doesn't have enough clear coat to machine polish themselves, it's actually detrimental to the car and detrimental to the actual clear coat itself. And you need to make sure you know how much clear coat you've got before you start machine polishing for those reasons. And that is what we would call responsible detailing. In modern times, most people are in cost-saving, cost-cutting measures and car manufacturers are actually no different. What they do is they try and put less paint and less clear coat on your car because that saves them money. It's not good for you because ideally as detailers we want really thick clear coat coats, which means we have years of use of machine polishing and removing scratches etc. But that's simply just not the case. Basically, when a manufacturer puts clear coat onto a car, that clear coat contains a lot of UV protection. And as the clear coat settles, that UV protection actually comes to top 50% of that clear coat. So all of the UV protection that you have on your paint is in the clear coat and it's in the top half of that clear coat. And that is the surface that we're actually machine polishing and removing when we do our compounding or polishing. So you need to know how much you're removing because as you're removing that clear coat on the top you're actually removing a lot of that UV protection and a lot of manufacturers will say that just by removing 25% or a quarter of that clear coat would render the paint warranty ineffective because you've removed too much UV protection which is protecting the actual base coat itself the actual color so you need to bear that in mind when you're actually removing clear coat and the only way to do that is to actually measure how much clear coat you have and you would do that by using a paint depth gauge. Now this might not come as a surprise to many people who are into detailing or who have used these before, but it's, uh, it's probably amazing to see how many people will start machine polishing without actually measuring how much clear coat they have. Now as a general rule, if you measure your paint and you've got over 200 microns, then the chances are the car has been resprayed. If you have between one and 200 microns, that is about average. If you have less than 100 microns, then that is actually quite thin paint. And if you have less than 70 or 80, it is very thin and you really need to approach with caution before you start machine polishing because even if it's a single stage or clear coat, there actually isn't a lot there. Uh, and if you start removing it, you could actually go to the primer. So you have to be very careful. And obviously the only way to know is to measure how much clear coat you have. And we're gonna give you a quick demonstration of how to do that now because a lot of video don't actually show you how to do it but we'll give you a quick demonstration now.
So as you saw from that demonstration, what you need to do is find a part of the car which has been sprayed but not lacquered. Initially I was pointing out the side of the car where you could see this clear shiny surface which was the lacquer and then inside the boot on this particular vehicle which is the only place I could find a place that was painted but not lacquered you could see that it was quite dull which shows that there's no lacquer but has been painted at the same time the car was painted. However in the corner you could see I was pointing out there was a slightly shinier surface where I was sort of saying no and there was a bit of overspray of lacquer so if you took the measurements there it would have been quite inaccurate as you saw from the readings. When I took a reading from the unlacquered surface we had an average of about 56.5 microns of paint and primer so that gave us a rough idea of how much paint is under the lacquer. When I then measured the corner you could see that that measurement jumped up to 77 because there was some lacquer overspray that slight amount of lacquer read up as 77 microns so that was quite an inaccurate reading. I then closed the boot or bonnet if you're an American viewer and I then took eight or nine measurements on the actual boot itself to give me an average of how much clear coat there is and that averaged 146.7 microns which means that we've actually got an average of about 90 microns of clear coat on this particular vehicle which shows that there's a nice thick layer of clear coat which gives us a lot of room for polishing and compounding without compromising the clear coat. Having said that, because there's 90 microns we only really want to work on 25% of that so if you work out 25% of 90 that works out to about 22.5 microns of use of actual compounding and polishing because once you've taken that 25% away, you're then compromising the clear coat because you've removed half of the UV protection in the top 50%, which means that the paint is now out of warranty. So these are the things you need to bear in mind. And that is basically on a vehicle like this, which had a nice, lovely, thick clear coat to play with. Sometimes if you have a thinner clear coat, you might have much less. So you need to bear all of this in mind. Another point to bear in mind is that if you're machine polishing thin paint or thin lacquer, could be single stage or lacquered, if you know it's thin, then basically don't work off the average, work off the thinnest point. So for example, when we measured the paint on the boot, the thinnest or the lowest reading we had was 135 microns. Now if this was really thin paint, and for example the reading was about 85 microns, then basically we would not work an average, we will just work on the lowest number because there's going to be parts of the paint which are really thin and you want to assume that everything is as thin as the thinnest point on really thin paint. So if you've got less than 100 microns when you do these readings, then we will just assume the lowest point and work off that. But if you have a nice thick clear coat, then it's fine to work off the average. So just bear in mind when detailing that actually chasing scratches sometimes isn't as important as preserving the integrity of the clear coat on your car. If you don't measure how much room to have to play with, sometimes you can make a costly error whether you're a professional or do-at-home DIY detailer and you might remove too much clear coat which then results in a costly respray. So it's much cheaper to invest in a good, doesn't have to be expensive, but a good coating thickness gauge which allow you to measure how much room you have to play with. And as we've gone through this video, it isn't just a case of knowing exactly how much clear coat you have because you need to work out not just the thickness, but what 25% of that is, which is your room to play with. And sometimes maintaining the integrity of the coat is more important than chasing scratches. And also when you're, a, a, for example, a professional detailer, this is something that you would always do, as I'm sure most professional detailers are, in discussing and consulting with your client or customer to discuss the options they have because it might not be possible to chase every single scratch and try and go for perfection, but just improve the quality of the paint. And that's something you might need to do at home as well. So a good quality paint thickness gauge like this one doesn't have to be expensive as long as it does the job. This one will actually measure iron and aluminium and it will switch between itself automatically and it has an error rating of about 2 plus or 2 minus microns plus 5 which is about the average for good coating thickness gauges. Sometimes these aren't super accurate unless you spend a lot of money on getting a coating thickness gauge. However, they'll give you a good gauge, a good idea of how many microns you have to play with and it'll give you an accurate enough measurement to actually measure how much clear coat you have. There are uh, measurement gauges out there that will measure each individual layer. Um, really, the sky's the limit. You can actually spend as much or as little as you want. But something like this will give you a rough idea of how much you have 
and it'll give you uh, the ability to make an educated guess about how much uh, clear coat you have to play with. So something like this is fine. So on our previous videos, we've had a few people comment on them to say that the sound was not very good. So what we've done, uh, we've actually invested in a pro microphone. So hopefully the sound is a lot better in this video. Make sure you comment down below to see if the sound is better, how you watch it. If not, we'll try and improve it further. But hopefully now you've got stereo sound and it does actually sound a lot better. So as we progress through the detail in chronological order, we've just released a video on machine polishers, an introduction to them. We're now going to move on to polishing pads as we go further through compounds and polishes, etc. Stay tuned for those, but we hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you press the bell icon to get alerts for future videos, and make sure you follow us on Instagram. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.